On that important day, I stood in front of my father's grave. My father had been the CEO of a major company, and after his death, my brother-in-law Kyle took over. He inherited the company and a huge fortune. In contrast, all I got was an old mini-truck. Kyle, flaunting his good fortune, mockingly said, With this, I've got the company and the entire estate in my grasp. That mini-truck suits you. But to me, that mini-truck was more than just a vehicle. I looked at it fondly, and when I started the engine, I noticed a destination already set on the navigation system. What's this? I wondered. With a firm yet gentle grip, I began to drive. My name is Jack Nicholson. I am a 44-year-old tutor. Now, I am standing before a large coffin where my father rests peacefully. My relationship with my father had always been very complicated. He built a construction company from scratch, but I chose a different path. I left home to become a teacher right after university, fulfilling a childhood dream. This decision led to many heated arguments, and for a long time, we barely spoke. But despite our disagreements, I never hated my father. I had my own dreams to follow, and I couldn't give them up to run the family business. Even though I felt a strong duty as the eldest son, guilt weighed on me for not meeting my father's expectations. This guilt kept me from visiting my parents' home. My mother relied on my sister, Lauren, to update my father about my life. Lauren and her husband would often send expensive gifts or arrange trips for my father's birthday or their anniversary, pretending they were from me. Each time, Lauren would encourage me, saying, I wish you and Dad could talk directly. He's just trying to be strong. Deep down, he must be feeling lonely. I often thought about Lauren's words and would just shake my head. But one day, I got the sad news that my father had cancer. When I heard this, I quickly quit my job and went back to where my family lived. I realized that what really mattered was life itself, and the past arguments with my father seemed so small. I decided to move back to my hometown, teach at a local school, and take care of my sick father. At first, my father was shocked to see me return, but he eventually accepted it quietly. I didn't say much either. I just stayed by his side and took care of him, helping him whenever he needed it. He would thank me softly, and those words brought me some peace. Sadly, my father's fight with his illness ended. The last chapter of his life closed quietly with me, Lauren, and our mother by his side. We couldn't know what he was thinking in his last moments, but we hoped his soul was at peace. Even though we expected it, losing him deeply affected us all. My mother, Lauren, and even my young nephew, Peter, were all very sad and cried. The only one who didn't show any emotion was my brother-in-law, Kyle. During the funeral preparations, he coldly asked, Did he finally die, huh? Hearing that, I was proud of myself for staying calm and not reacting angrily to Kyle. Instead, I focused on planning my father's funeral. This kept me busy and helped distract me from the pain. I ignored Kyle's harsh words and made sure everything for the funeral was done right. Kyle and I had never gotten along well, and our relationship only got worse over time. But despite everything, I kept my focus during this tough time. I first met Kyle when he was a skilled worker at my father's company, and I really respected his skills. It felt like I had gained a real brother when Kyle married my sister, Lauren. He was five years older than me and seemed like a role model. Before they got married, I often asked him for advice on various problems and he always listened with understanding. One of our big discussions was about whether I should join the family business. Kyle would say, Sean should live his own life, and Jack, you have your own path. No one knows which choices in life are the best, so the most important thing is to make choices you won't regret later. Encouraged by his words, I switched from business school, where I was studying management, to the faculty of education, where I really wanted to study. As time went on, Kyle and Lauren got married and started their life together. Twenty-two years have passed since then, and the distance between my father and me grew wider. I moved on with my life, missing the chance to close that gap. But when I heard about my father's illness, I dropped everything and rushed home. 
Kyle, who once greeted me warmly, had changed. He now seemed uncomfortable around me. When we were alone, Kyle would say coldly, you came back in a hurry when you heard Sean was sick, didn't you? But no matter what, you won't inherit anything. His words caught me off guard, and I struggled to respond. What do you mean? Don't act like you don't know. It might be a coincidence, but even if you now want to run the company, it's already decided that I will be the next leader? His harsh words shocked me, and I replied louder than I intended. No, that's not it. I didn't come back for the company. I realized I hadn't been a good son and wanted to apologize to dad, even if it's late. Kyle dismissed me, I don't need your fancy talk. It sounds like something from a TV drama. Lauren likes that kind of stuff, but were all those gifts you sent just a way to look good in front of scene? That's absolutely not true. I tried to explain, but Kyle had already made up his mind and wasn't interested in believing me. His words also seemed like the slight against Lauren, and for the first time, I felt a deep divide between us. Ever since that incident, I started to feel really upset with Kyle. He began to mock me openly. No matter how much you try to win scene over, that time has passed. Don't make me laugh. Go back to where you belong and take care of your troubled students, he would say. At first, I thought deeply about how I appeared to others and how they saw me. But Kyle's words showed he was more concerned about himself than our father. His behavior often seemed disrespectful to both his father-in-law and his wife, Lauren. I started to believe that Kyle had married Lauren mainly to get closer to my father's company and wealth. He rarely visited my father when he was sick and didn't help take care of him. Now, all I could do was work as hard as possible to protect the company my father seen had built. Kyle always sounded polished, but he really just wanted to avoid problems. On weekends, he would go play golf, claiming it was for business. He hardly ever took care of his own son. He said he wanted his son to learn many skills to eventually take over the business, but he left all the driving and housework to Lauren. When Lauren showed a bit of unhappiness about this, Kyle would passionately take her hand and say, I'm giving my all for seeing's sake. Now is the time to produce results by any means necessary. Let's overcome this trial together. Lauren found it hard to stand up to him and usually just nodded, even though she seemed reluctant. Kyle was good at acting like the perfect husband in front of Lauren, so it's no surprise she believed him. He showed his true self to me, probably because he thought I was like him. I eventually got used to Kyle's mocking, and it didn't bother me as much. However, when our beloved father passed away, I was heartbroken. I felt a deep sadness and emptiness. Although Kyle seemed upset about our father's worsening health, I couldn't shake the feeling that he had been waiting for this moment. This thought made me very sad and angry. After our father died, Kyle inherited most of our father's large fortune. Even though he was just a son-in-law, he had the same rights to the inheritance as Laura and me, according to my father's will. He got most of the shares of the company and a lot of wealth. This unexpected turn of events left me speechless, even though I was my father's biological child. I had thought the inheritance would be split fairly among the three of us, but instead, Kyle got almost everything. All I received was an old mini truck that my father once loved. In public, Kyle seemed surprised, but alone with me, he laughed and said, You came all the way from the city to this small town, took care of seed day and night, and all you got is this little truck, huh? What an ironic end. Now the company is mine, and you're left with just this mini truck as your inheritance. It's like a comedy. As he left the room with a smirk, I felt empty inside. Holding the mini truck keys tightly, the cold metal made me face the harsh reality. But my family tried to cheer me up. Keep your head up. Scene had his reasons. He didn't mean to upset you. That truck was something Dad always loved. It was his favorite vehicle. He surely cared about you. Despite their kind words, I was too hurt to respond. I knew that what you inherit doesn't measure a father's love, but the fact that Kyle, who seemed to be waiting for my father to die, 
got almost everything, was deeply insulting. It wasn't about the money, it was the pain of seeing my father's hard work go to such a man. I felt powerless to change the situation. Clutching the truck key, I decided to take care of the mini truck, the only thing my father left me. It seemed to hold a deeper meaning. I hoped that cleaning the truck might help me sort out my feelings. I carefully washed the truck with a hose and then sat in the driver's seat, where my father used to sit. Starting the engine, I noticed something unusual on the navigation system. It was displaying a single thick blue route instead of just showing my location. That's odd. Why is there a destination set on the navigation system? I wondered. This usually only happens when a specific route is being followed. When I checked the destination on the screen, it showed only coordinates, not a specific place. It would take about an hour's drive. Wanting to go for a drive in the mini truck, I didn't think too much about it, put the truck in first gear, and left the house. An hour later, during a pleasant drive, I arrived at what seemed like a home. It was a surprise. In front of me was a small, modest house, quite different from the larger homes in my hometown. It felt warm and inviting. The area was quiet, and I couldn't see or hear anyone else around. I got out of the truck and stood in front of the house, feeling a bit confused. There were no signs to indicate what this place was, but it seemed the navigation system had brought me here for a reason. With some hesitation, I rang the doorbell. As the door slowly opened, the person I saw was the last one I expected my mom. I've been waiting, Jack. Come in, dear, she said. Why are you here, mom? And how come this place was set in dad's navigation system? I asked. I will explain everything, but first, come inside and relax, she replied. Following her inside, I found the interior simple yet cozy, with just the essentials. My mom made some tea and started to explain in a calm voice. Actually, this was your father's secret hideout. A hideout? I was surprised. I've never heard about dad having a place like this. She explained, this place is our secret spot. We came here when we needed our own space or when we wanted some peace and quiet. If we ever had a small argument, our rule was to come here to cool off. You didn't know about it, did you? I was stunned and deep in thought. I had no idea such a family rule existed. She continued, and this, this is something your father wanted you to have. Saying this, she handed me a brown envelope. It was slightly bulging, as if something important was packed inside. I decided to read the letter addressed to me. Jack, I have caused you a lot of trouble and made you endure unbearable hardships over the years. I am truly sorry from the bottom of my heart. The letter was filled with my father's reflections on his past mistakes and his deep gratitude towards me. He wrote, Your mother often tells me that it was your choice to leave home, and a son has the right to choose his own path in life. We are both stubborn, but when you came back after I fell ill, it was a wonderful surprise for me, although I couldn't express it well, because I'm not good at showing my feelings. I am deeply grateful to you for supporting and taking care of the family. This was the first time I heard such heartfelt words from my father, and it made me very emotional. The letter also mentioned Kyle. To tell the truth, my distress towards Kyle grew over time. He's good with words and makes people feel comfortable, but I could see his true nature. I suspected his sneaky behavior around the house was his way of trying to claim ownership. I was too tired from work and taking care of you all to notice his cunning actions. But now, knowing Kyle as I do, I believe these suspicions were correct. The letter continued, I have no intention of giving the company to you, but if something unexpected happens, I have left a significant amount of money with your mother. This is to ensure that you and Lauren will not be in need. Please accept it. After finishing the letter, I looked up at my mother, she said nothing but looked at the brown envelope. I hesitantly reached for it and checked its contents, confirming everything was in my mother's name. She began to speak firmly, if I transfer the accounts to you and Lauren's names, it would be considered a gift under tax laws. If it's mentioned in the will, Kyle might try to take it. 
Your father gave this money to me secretly while he was still alive to avoid Kyle's interference. Now, I want to give it to you and Lauren as a living gift. She explained this to me, but I was still trying to understand the full impact. The amount written in the account book she showed me was huge, unlike anything I could have imagined. I had never seen so much money before. It meant a lot to me that my dad had left this for me, not because of the amount, but because it showed he really cared about me, not just Kyle who was seen as his successor. This touched me deeply. We didn't often share deep emotional words, but I knew he always cared deeply for us. I want everything I entrusted to your mother to be passed on to you as a thank you for all the gifts you've given me, and for that, I am truly grateful, he wrote. Before I knew it, tears were streaming down my face. I couldn't hold back my emotions. For a long time, I felt that my father never really understood me, but I was completely wrong. He always understood and valued me. That's probably why he trusted me with that old mini truck knowing I would value it and use it well. Mom, I really wish I could have done more for Dad, I said, feeling deep regret. But my mother comforted me with a gentle smile. She seemed to understand the regret I felt, saying, it's natural to think you could have done more when mourning a parent. But you brought your father great joy and gave him so much love. You were his greatest pride. Hearing her words made me cry again. They also inspired me to make a firm decision. I wouldn't let the company my father built fall into the hands of someone like Kyle, who had wished for his death. I had decided to quietly resist and make a careful plan without letting Kyle know I had acquired a significant fortune. The first step was to contact the corporate executives my father had trusted to build a foundation for their support. They agreed to help, supporting my desire to carry on my father's legacy. Their reactions made it clear that my father had never spoken poorly of me. Meanwhile, my mother and sister acted soothingly during the will reading, keeping Kyle's attention off me. They continued to act the same way in front of Kyle, which made him think he had succeeded and looked down on me with arrogance. Hey, hey, do you, abandoned by your father and left a poor man, still intend to stay in this house, he taunted. I'm the new president now. Admit your defeat and go back home. Kyle would say these words dismissively, waving his hand as if he was shooing away a small fly. Since becoming CEO, Kyle's arrogant attitude created a tense atmosphere in the company. Despite his high position, he ignored his duties and became rude to his staff. This caused a lot of problems and many skilled employees left unhappy with his leadership. Kyle didn't question his approach and remained overly confident. Those who can't grasp my superior vision might as well quit immediately, he would say in public, making decisions without listening to anyone else. As problems in the company increased, Kyle enjoyed spending money and living lavishly, while his passion for the business seemed to disappear. When I first met him, he seemed like a great person. He was skilled and even my dad liked him. How had he changed so much? She cried every night, hiding her tears from the children. I couldn't just watch the company fall apart. I was quietly planning my next move. The day came when I acted. I left home early and waited at the office for Kyle. When he walked into the president's office, he was shocked to see me sitting there. What the hell are you doing? Why are you sitting there? Get this person out of here, he demanded. The one who should be leaving is you, I replied calmly. What are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? Kyle looked at me as if I was an annoying insect. Using the assets our father left us, I had bought the majority of the company's shares. An extraordinary general meeting of shareholders was held, and you were officially removed as president. Kyle, I'm sorry to say, but you are no longer the president of this company. Wait just a minute, he stammered, confused and repeating words that made no sense. Don't you understand? I now control two-thirds of this company's shares. You thought the inheritance was just an old mini-truck, but that truck turned into money in an unexpected way. Kyle tried to dig into details about the hideaway, but I avoided his questions and changed the subject, which only made him more upset. 
The game is over, leave this place immediately, I told him calmly and handed him several documents. As Kyle looked through them, his face went white. What is this? he asked. These are the minutes from the extraordinary general meeting of shareholders, and this other document is your dismissal notice, I explained. Kyle became very angry, crumpled the papers in his hands, and shouted, You think this will hold up? I'll take legal action. Go ahead with legal action. We have good reasons for our actions. I responded calmly. What reasons? You've just been after the old man's wealth and this company from the start. It's nothing but jealousy, Kyle accused. Let me ask you directly, Kyle. Have you been using company assets for personal use and signing leasing contracts for your own benefit? I asked. What if I have? What's it to you? Kyle replied, his face turning pale with shock. How did you know about that? He stammered as I listed his misconduct, like taking home computers and other appliances meant for company use. There's more. Computers and TVs that should be at the office are at your house, being used for personal things. Isn't that enough reason to act? I pressed on. Struggling to respond, Kyle frantically tried to defend himself. Why? How do you know about that? He asked, his lips trembling. I kept my gaze fixed on him and continued, you should have been more aware of your responsibilities. Did you become complacent when you thought you controlled everything? I had been gathering information about Kyle's actions from the company's executives. After our father passed away, Kyle became more arrogant. He used to at least pretend to respect others, but as president, he began to shift his work onto others and even fell asleep in his office. This attitude caused many loyal employees who respected my father to leave, frustrated by his behavior. Kyle, upset by the situation, doubted my ability to manage, emphasizing that it was impossible for me to fulfill the role of a manager. I had never worked a day in this company. Think about it, how can someone with no experience in running a company become president? It's impossible to trust management to someone like you, Kyle argued. You're absolutely right, I agreed. I have no intention of becoming the president of this company. My sitting in this chair is just a symbolic message to you. In fact, a new president has already been elected by a different board of directors and is already carrying out their duties. Kyle was stunned. He stood there with his mouth open and his eyes wide, shocked by the turn of events. He had been sure that I was after the presidency and had schemed to replace him. As I've said many times, I'm not after the president's position. My only goal is to honor my father and protect the company he spent his life building, I explained. Who would believe such fancy talk? Kyle retorted. He thought I only cared about the wealth and status that came from our father, not his true worth. After my reply, Kyle trembled with anger for a moment, but then composed himself. Do you think this is over and you can just enjoy it? He scoffed and then stormed out of the president's office. That night, something unexpected happened. Lauren threw divorce papers at Kyle, ending their marriage. This was a result of his misconduct at the company and his eventual firing. The new president was chosen from among the directors who respected my father and were determined to protect what he built. I felt the company should be led by someone who would continue my father's legacy, a sentiment my mother and sister supported. As I coordinated Kyle's dismissal with the lawyers, Lauren was preparing for the divorce. On the day she mentioned divorce, her hurt voice filled the house with a heavy atmosphere. Why do you turn away from me now? Is it because I've lost the title of president and you've lost interest in me? Kyle asked. Maintaining her calm but firm, Lauren replied, there's no point in talking about betrayal. You were the one who betrayed our relationship from the start. Your love was not for me but for the title of the president's daughter. You neglected our home, didn't help raise our children, showed no respect to our sick father, and in the end, you tried to take everything from our father for yourself. Now it's time for you to face the consequences. Kyle had no response to Lauren's words. She had endured a lot, worrying about her children's futures and the fate of the company. 
but thankfully, the inheritance from our father gave her a solid financial base to raise her children after the divorce. We plan to live a peaceful life away from conflict with our mother and sister. Our only concern was the possibility of retaliation from Kyle, but he was now out of funds. He had lost a lot of money to an investment scam and was even in debt. This scam involved a man pretending to be from a brokerage firm who was actually a fraudster. Kyle, swayed by convincing words, lost a significant amount. This situation shows how people can exploit those who suddenly have a lot of money. Now, Kyle was suffering the financial consequences of his actions. Meanwhile, I spent fulfilling days taking care of my mother. I enjoyed a peaceful, comfortable life, continuing my work at the tutoring school. My mother and I also took great joy in caring for my nephew Peter, who was very fond of us. His presence added happiness to our daily lives. When I grow up, I'm going to be a president like Grandpa, Peter declared, his words filled with the innocence of childhood dreams. This brought smiles to our faces and even made my mother tear up with emotion. Lauren and I exchanged knowing looks, our smiles reflecting warmth and understanding. You might say that now, but I wouldn't be surprised if you want to become a teacher when you're in college. I teased him gently, reflecting on similar past statements, which made everyone laugh. But I'm not very good at studying, so maybe I won't make a good teacher, he said seriously, furrowing his brow. His earnestness made this even more endearing and prompted more laughter, this time filled with affection. In that moment, filled with an overwhelming sense of happiness, we realized we were truly living in the present enjoying our family unity and ready to face whatever the future might bring.